I'm going to do a quick, uh, just a quick gear review uh, of the stuff we brought, things we learned. First of all, REI makes a superior tent. Look at that thing. It's awesome. Uh, both of them, they go up fast. They kept us dry on a couple of uh, very, uh, very wet nights. So we're just going to go through a few pieces of what we consider uh, essential gear and kind of tell you how some of the stuff performed, how it didn't. Uh, acting as my van and white will be Matt, ba Matt Butler. All right, so the first thing is uh, a good waterproof pack. This is a Seal Line Pro Pack 115. Uh, it's 115 liters, very big, a very hardy pack. Uh, it kept everything dry, no matter uh, how much rain we got. It has a nice back system on it that's adjustable to fit how you want to fit. It's got a belly band, good straps. Uh, did a third of a mile portage with it, and it wasn't too bad uh, with probably 75 pounds in it. And uh, great pack. Make sure you have something very good that will keep stuff dry. Uh, the next thing, while you're paddling, we have these canoe chairs. We found that these are uh, extremely comfortable and reliable while you're out on the water. Saves your back. They strap right into the canoe. Yeah, they're made by GCI. and Make sure you get the extension straps because uh, they don't fit on the canoe seats. But so we, we it, have uh, anyway. Yep, these are the extension straps here straps right onto your canoe and gives you back support while you're paddling. Another great piece of gear. The next thing is a good life jacket. Uh, I've got this Bass Pro Shops AM24. It's an automatic or manual inflate. It has a CO2 cartridge in the side, so uh, very light, very packable, and not bad when you're wearing it. And then uh, if you hit the water, it'll keep you, keep you floating. Um, going through some other gear, a towel. This is the uh, Tech Towel microfiber packs up very small and compact for your for your bag and it's actually the size of a bath towel so open it up here and yeah, no matter how small you are you need the extra large so get the extra large <laughs> one look at that so it folds out to a nice big towel cold water this will uh, dry you off and keep you warm and uh, it dries out quickly if you hang it on a line um, one of the other things that we've done is Kind of a creature comfort from home. This is the Mr. Heater Little Buddy. Attaches on to a standard propane bottle. Um, put this in your heater and it'll, uh, in your tent, excuse me, and it'll warm up your tent in about 10 or 15 minutes to uh, nice and toasty. The, the coldest we've had so far is about 37 degrees. And this has been uh, very nice to have on those brisk mornings. Yeah, we're not wusses. We got those in case somebody got in the water and they were hypothermic. We needed to heat them up real fast. That's, that's why we got them. <laughs> This is my camp chair. It's made by Wild Horn. Uh, holds over 300 pounds, so a very hardy, very sturdy chair. It's got the nice big feet on it, so if you've got a little sand or mud, it works well for that. And it packs down into this bag. So again, very packable, very light, uh, and fits well in your pack. You do need a camp chair. I mean, sitting at the table and sitting in the canoe seats gets old. You need something like that, you just relax in. We have a medical kit. Luckily we have not had to use it on this trip, but this one is made by um, Adventure Medical Kits. It's a Sportsman Series medical kit Bighorn, and uh, it's got wound care, a field trauma pack, and some medications in here to take care if you do have any accidents along the way. A couple more things. A hammock. This is a packable hammock, similar to an Eno. This is a knockoff brand, but it also works very well. Rated to, uh, for large guys like myself, over 300 pounds uh, capacity, and hangs up in a tree, and very comfortable to relax when you get to camp, uh, read a book, and hang out by the river. All right, I'm good. Good stuff. So we're gonna keep going here. We'll let our second Vanna White here go through. Probably one of the most important things we had is, uh, is book. Um, all right, Gil Gil Patrick wrote a book called The Allagash Guide. Great planning factors in there, good checklists, uh, great recommendations. Pretty much if he recommended it and I didn't take his recommendation, I regretted it. So get a good planning book, pay attention to the checklist. It tells you if you want to go on the river for five days and four nights, here's where you should start. But, you know, six days and five nights, here's where you should start and take out. So it's a great book. I uh, highly recommend that one. Uh, fire starters. <coughs> You know, when it's wet, you want to start a fire, it can be difficult, especially because these campsites get picked over pretty good. So for kindling and stuff, dryer lit, this should scare the crap out of you, but this stuff goes up with a single spark. So clean out your dryers. And then this is just, I uh, use cotton balls. I melt down some um, petroleum jelly, Vaseline or whatever, and then I dip them in there, saturate those, and then I just roll them around in some uh, uh, cedar 
chips and, and sawdust, and that was just so they're easier to handle. They're not quite so messy like that. All right, if it cuts, it's important. So uh, get yourself a good axe, a good saw, and a good knife. This is a Gransford Brook axe. Um, not going to lie, they're not cheap, but that's a great quality piece of equipment there. My family got it for my birthday, and I'm uh, very, very grateful. Um, it's just a, a superior product, best axe I've ever had. It'll limb trees, it'll split wood, and it'll chop it if you really need it to. And it'll cut your finger, I promise. <laughs> uh, this is a Randall knife. Uh, again, my Marines got this for me when I left command, and it was a gift. And I'm telling you, uh, they're not cheap, I don't think, uh, and, and they're very high quality, handmade down in Florida. But I'm telling you, this knife is, is fantastic. It's done everything I've needed it to do. Uh, it's held the blade really well, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a great knife. So this is the uh, Randall Airman. But get a good knife and a good saw. Um, moving along, right, so I built, uh, again, I want to Gil Gil Patrick's books on, on building outdoor gear. This is a canoe box. And basically what I've done here, it's just, uh, it's made out of quarter inch plywood. And uh, then you fiberglass that, you seal it up, then you fiberglass it. Um, and that's all you really need to do. It'll stay, then you do the, the lids and you got these, uh, got these latches, right? So then it holds it down. And then what I've done is I put some water stripping in here. So that keeps it waterproof, um, and it fell in the water, so we know it is waterproof. So that works out good. And then uh, just for fun, uh, I just did some inlaid wood, put a checkerboard on there so you can play checkers or chess. Uh, checkers for me. But um, so that worked out pretty well. These I used initially just to uh, put underneath the straps of my canoe so it wouldn't, the straps wouldn't rub against my canoe. So I set it like this, and, and it, and it uh, just protected it. It's just a foam rubber uh, swim thing. And uh, so I cut it in half, but then I thought, hey, that's what I could really do is I could put that, put the Velcro here. This way it doesn't tear up my canoe when it's in the bottom of it. And then when I want to put this thing on my back, put the straps here, I slide this thing down there and it supports my back. Uh, also, I put the, the shoulder straps on so I can carry it. And also when it's laying in the canoe, here's the map of the waterway so you can kind of keep track of where you're at. Um, all right. So if you have time, I mean, it, it, it was a, it's a good piece of gear and it's, uh, it's uh, it's worth the time making it, and uh, it makes it just, it's plus it's just a cool thing to have. Uh, for organization, we got our, our camp stove. Again, uh, a lot of people will think I'll just cook, cook over the open fire every night. Um, no, so get a camp stove. This is a two burner, just a Coleman stove, pretty simple. Uh, piece of gear to have. With our heaters and the camp stove, we brought about five bottles of propane, yeah. and we found that that is more than enough for a five day trip. Yeah, easy. And then I have a drawer up here, and that's just got groceries and stuff like that. It's a bit messy now, but it started out really organized. Um, so, so that's good if you, if you have the time to make it. This is another thing that's in his book on how to make some gear. This is a reflector oven. And what you do is you just basically put your, whatever you're going to cook, uh, biscuits or cornbread or whatever in there. Build you a big, strong fire, put it right in front, and the heat reflecting off uh, bakes bread. It's, uh, it's good, it works, but it's kind of big, and, and it's awkward shaped. So... I definitely wouldn't put the feet on the back if I had to build it again because those get caught on stuff, but uh, I'm not sure I'd bring it again. It was good and, and, and it did work, but I don't know. It's something I have to think about. All right, this is a pot pan kit. And it's really good. Um, it stacks up nice. So you got a, you know, you got a big pot, you got a frying pan, you got a small pot, and you got a handle. And they call this a cutting board. It's more like a plate. And this handle folds out. So you take all the stuff off the off the plane. Only thing, I mean, I love this thing. It packs up nice. It worked great. The only complaint I have, and, I, and it and it doesn't, it, it tells you right up front you can't do this, but you can't put it on the open fire. So you can only use it on your camp stove. So you might want to think about bringing something that you can put on open fire. But if it doesn't matter to you, these things do work really great. And I'm trying to think of who makes this one. Yeah, four bit GSI makes this, and I got an LL Bean. It's a great piece of gear. My godson bought it for me, so highly recommend it. Uh, this is a hand pump for water purification because you're going to need water and uh, you can't drink it right out of the river or the lake. So uh, basically unless you want to spend the whole night in the outhouse. So this one you hand pump it through. Great for what it's designed for. It's just not good for this trip because you need more water for two guys than this can produce. So get one of those five liter hanging uh, filter kits or something to that effect that makes more water faster. It works. It's a great piece of gear. It's just not really designed for what we just did with it. We brought a five gallon little cheap plastic water container there that you can see yeah. and this is uh, we started off with that full and uh, have done a little bit of filtering using the hand filter and we've also boiled some water and added to that as we've gone so um, we've probably gone through about 10 gallons of water between the two of us yeah. with cooking and uh, with drinking um, 
here's an essential. Now, some people might want to get away with regular baby wipes, but if you go to the uh, dollarshaveclub.com, one wipe Charlie's will change your life. Um, they're highly desirable in, in the outhouse, and uh, they'll, they'll make you happy. Uh, a GPS. Matt's been running this GPS. It's a Garmin uh, E-Trex 20. It's been great. Uh, it keeps us like where we are. It lets us know how far we've gone, how fast our travels are, and uh, what direction we're going. So that, that, that's good to have. Don't skimp on the booze. Now, it's not a, it's not a, a booze fest or anything like that, a booze cruise, but uh, it's nice at the end of the day to sit around. Matt and I, uh, cocktail hours usually about 1900 uh, in, in accordance with social convention and just good taste. Uh, we'll have a small glass of, of, of scotch and just enjoy the evening by the fire. So that, that's a good thing to do. Um, I have an isomat that blows up by itself. Uh, it's worked, it works pretty well. Uh, so far, I've had to blow it up. It doesn't really blow up by itself very well. But um, hopefully as I use it more, that'll get better. And then uh, we have a tool bag, a cooler. This is an igloo. Uh, it's not a very large cooler, but what we had, we had, we had, uh, we had four steaks, three chicken breasts, smoked sausage, 18 eggs, uh, uh, two pounds of hamburger, eight brat br uh, patties. Uh, what else? A we pound have? of bacon, yeah. a pound of breakfast sausage. Yeah and a pound of smoked sausage all in that cooler. So, so you freeze that all before you go, and we stuck it in this, in this thing and for five days now, and if it's the fifth day, uh, it's kept everything frozen, or us the fourth day or fifth day? Today's the fourth day. Fourth day, so it's kept everything frozen. We kind of ate it as it's thawed. What's more thawed? Whatever was more thawed, that's what we ate. Uh, Gil Gilpatrick will tell you, you know, plan your meals and eat your plan, and that's probably a good idea. Um, that's just not how we did it. Um, have a five gallon bucket to get water that's good cut up something like this uh, it's just a you know this is a, a windshield wash thing to, to bail your canoe in case you put a hole in your canoe on the first day out there um, like one of us did and then you um, then you can bail out on your way so it's a good thing to have uh, good rain gear is essential because you don't know when you're gonna get caught in the rain so I highly recommend that and then uh, the one thing you can't have too much of wine. Right, we, we've got, uh, we've got, so I had paracord, I had a big, big thing of paracord, and then I bought another 100 feet of this braided line, and we use it for hanging this tarp, we use it for a dryer, uh, a drying rack, it's just, and, and tying up the boat, so it's just good to have. And the last thing, this tarp. What's the size of the tarp? 15 foot by 19 foot. So 15 by 19 is about the, about the right size. This next smaller one down I think would be too small. The next bigger one up would be not only too big, but very difficult to handle, and, and it, it start, they start getting heavy. So that, uh, that's a great piece of gear to have. So that's about, uh, you know, obviously quality paddles. We went two of the canoe, uh, two, uh, two for each boat, and uh, so far we haven't had to, thank God, um, go to the spare, but it's there if we need it. Always bring a good pair of shoes that can get wet. Yeah. Um, Bob's worn a pair of old military boots that uh, have done really well. I'm wearing some Merrill uh, tennis shoes that are for camping and hiking that dry out very well. Your feet are going to get wet no matter what you do. Uh, so the other thing to do is bring a good pair of camp shoes. Uh, we've got Sperry's and Crocs that we use and uh, that's been great to have to let your feet dry out while you're at the camp. Right, absolutely. Um, so that's about it. Oh, bungee cords, you know, bring stuff like that. But that, That's kind of the essential gear we brought, the stuff that we found useful. Um, I'm sure if everyone that does this has a, has a, a piece of, of gear that they think, what, what's your favorite piece of gear? What's your most essential piece of gear you brought? The seal line bag. Okay. Absolutely. So there you have it. And what's yours? You. <laughs> pick your company because you're gonna be you're gonna be spending a lot of time with them. So pick your company wisely. Matt, you're a great piece of gear. <laughs> All right, and finally, just to end this video, when you've got a view like this, everything's great. Happy birthday, Matt. Thanks.